you broke the jump ropes. Pretty much all of this is fucked. And you were sober? Yeah. <laughs> so literally at like 1.30 in the morning, I probably ate, I ate a bar. All right, let's see what we're going to have for breakfast, shall we? So, don't look at, I have a roommate, so that's all his, his uh, bad stuff. We're going to just go for the basics. So we're going to go eggs, and then cooking fat. So... Whenever I have, I get eggs, I'm always looking for pasture-raised. There's regular eggs, which are a, just a travesty to mankind. There's organic eggs, which means that the, the, the chickens just eat organic shitty food. But it's still, it's still shitty food. And then free-range means that they have like a very small area to move which everyone thinks is like the greatest thing ever. So that's not the best thing ever. Pasture raised means that they actually have a lot more room to move around and they eat worms instead of grains. And the grains that chickens are usually eating is usually like soy and other like really bad things. So the best thing you can do when you get eggs is get anything that says pasture raised. So there's a reason why I do that. And then whenever I cook, uh, you want something that can handle a medium to high heat because that's how you're going to cook your eggs. You're never going to cook them on like super low. So this is like my favorite right now. It's bison tallow. So it's basically bison fat. So that's pretty cool that I use. Otherwise, I'll use coconut oil, but you can't go over medium heat. A lot of times it will tell you on there if you can or not. It'll say medium heat or some of them will say high heat. But... Um, Usually you want the unrefined raw version of coconut oil and it can only go to medium. What are the pasture what do those eggs cost a dozen? These are well, I got these on sale for five bucks. They're usually like six or seven. Yeah. It's a it's a big difference because like regular eggs are a dollar. Yeah. Two dollars, right? Yeah. And sometimes I still buy them. Like I'm having my days where I'm like, you know what? This is all bullshit, you know? And you get significantly more gas and stuff from eggs that are not pasture-raised. There's something to that, I think, for sure. Plus, if you look at some of the studies, there's a whole bunch of information out there where if the chicken is stressed out and they're not having, like, a good life, like, they're, in, like, in these... You should see some of these ridiculous things that they're in. Some of them can't even move at all. And when they live like that, it increases cortisol inside of the chicken. And they, they think that... Actually, they've proven that you... They pass that on to you. So when you eat those really cheap eggs, you're actually increasing your cortisol levels in your body, which makes it harder for you to gain muscle, harder for you to stay motivated, and you know, gives you a whole bunch of different side effects, like like almost like being sick. So God, that's why I'm so fucked up. That's all I eat. <laughs> a common misconception is cooking with olive oil. So olive oil does not have a high heat tolerance. It's very low. So if you're going to ever cook with this, it has to be on extremely low heat and it also, or it has to be raw. So if you're cooking your eggs in olive oil, also not good. So what happens is when you cook it past the heat it's allowed to cook at, it becomes a trans fat. So trans fat is like what's in fast food. So it turns a good fat into a shitty fat, aka frying, right? When you fry something, it totally ruins everything. So you cook it past its heating point, you ruin it. All right, so let's get this thing going. 
I just like to put it on high just for like a minute just to get it heated up and then I crank it back down. That was quality. Yeah. Valuable info. <laughs> so I don't measure it or anything. I just kind of... I've measured it like once or twice and now I can kind of eyeball it. A lot of people think that... Measuring is like the worst thing in the world, and it kind of is. And I don't really condone any of the diets that make you like absolutely have to measure. I'm a huge fan of just measuring like one, two times, and then being able to just consistently like be able to put that same amount into a pan. Or when you're eating protein, for instance, you can see how much you're eating all the time, kind of put your hand next to it and see like the size of your hand versus the size of meat you're eating. and you can really, really, you can really, really, you can really just figure out how much to eat every time just by eyeballing stuff. You don't have to walk around the scale and be weird. As soon as you become weird, none of this is fun anymore. And you lose all of your friends. That's not good. I've lost all my friends multiple times. <laughs> So I like cooking them like this simply because of time. It's faster. If I was to scramble anything, it would uh, take a little bit more time. And you got to put everything in a bowl. Pain in my ass. So I just put them on here. And have you messed with intermittent fasting or no? I have. And I actually do intermittent fasting challenges on my social media sometimes. I do intermittent fasting and carb cycling challenges like all the time uh, for all my people. The reason that I don't do the intermittent fasting mainly is because I lose a lot of weight really fast. Which if I needed to lose weight or if I wanted to cut, I think that it would be top of my list of things to do. But it's hard for me to keep weight on, so if I fast, I'm screwed. <laughs> but definitely for people out there trying to lose weight, not having breakfast in the morning and having at least a 12-hour window of not eating is great. I think it's good for a lot of people. At this point, I'm just going to put on a few things. Sea salt is always the way to go. You gotta. If I don't have enough salt in my diet, I wind up cramping a lot. Like, while I'm working out, I'll have, like, a lot of cramps. And I don't mean, like, PMS ones. I mean, like, real fucking terrible body cramps. Like, Charlie Horse cramps. Gotta always link it up with some pepper. Big important thing I just kind of passed over without even really thinking about it is you get pink salt because pink salt has minerals in it that white salt doesn't. And it has iodine in it, which white salt doesn't. A lot of times, iodine is so important that the white salt companies will actually have to write on there no iodine because it's that important. Um, but this also has a bunch of different trace minerals and stuff in there that are not found in any other type of salt. So this is, uh, you, you have to have this. It's night and day. And I got it for clearance for $2.99. So it's doable to get all this stuff real cheap. And how many meals will you typically have in a day? Um, it really depends a lot because some days I just work a shit ton. Usually like Sunday and Mondays, I don't eat all that much food because I'm making all the workouts for my gym programming and my people online all day Sunday. Like it's the whole day. And then Monday happens and I have to get up my podcast and make the, all the graphics for that. Finish up any workouts that I didn't make. 
um, get out all the meetings and get all the stuff with the gym done. It's really, really hard on Mondays, but typically, no matter what, I'll have a pretty big breakfast and a massive dinner. And then the rest of the day, we'll have, like, little bits of, I don't know, probably, like, three to 500 calorie little pops of food, which still sounds like a lot for most people, but I always usually average, like, 3,500 calories. I try to get, yeah, I try to get 3,500 every day. I just found out that I'm going to be working out soon, so if that's the case, I'm going to eat some carbohydrates. So normally, I always talk about earning your carbohydrates. Don't eat any carbohydrates unless you are going to either work out or you're getting done working out. And what that does is it really keeps your body super, super lean all the time. So a lot of people ask me, how do you stay lean year-round all the time? Well, typically, this would be my breakfast, and that would be it. So now, I'm gonna add some carbohydrates to this bad boy. I'll eat an apple. Which I wouldn't normally do. And I'll eat probably some raspberries. Ideally, I would have some oatmeal right now, but I don't think I have any. He has like a decent amount. I mean, you're going to Whole Foods later. You can restock them. Yeah, it's a good point. It's fucked up. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna do this. This is fine. Yeah. You don't like it? <laughs> you know how I feel about this mic. Yeah, we need to find we need to invent something. I know we could be rich just off of mics. Seriously. People would eat that shit up. I would. You definitely did up. I'd be like, how much is this fucking thing? I don't even care. I just found out that I gave away like half my gym. What do you mean? I'll like sign a paperwork that says that like half my gym is gone just to buy one of these. <laughs> <laughs> So do you always go out for coffee or do you ever make it at home? I never make it at home. For me, going to get coffee, like the experience of going to get coffee, is literally why I get the coffee. I don't think it's because of the coffee. I mean, there's like, there's a good portion of why I get a coffee. This makes no sense right now. So hold on. <laughs> I'm in the gym all day. And to go get a coffee, to me, it gives me a time to get out of the gym, to get out of my routine, and to go somewhere new. So, like, if I was to come home and, and eat every meal and come home to make my own coffee and come home to do this and then go to the gym, like, my life would just be home in the gym and I wouldn't like that. Some people, that's really great, but for me, like, I'll freak out. You'll see, uh, if you're here around long enough today, there'll be a point where I'll hop on my bike and I'll literally go on a 10 mile bike ride like as fast as I possibly can, like when the weather gets really, really nice. And it's almost like you let a dog outside and you're just like, all right, go and I'll see you in a few minutes, right? Like, and the dog goes and does his business. For me, it's like, I get on my bike and I'm like, ah, and I go for like, like an, I go, I ride for like an hour and I come straight back to my house and then I go back to the gym and I'm like, ah, ah, ah. and like it literally is like almost like my tongue's out and I'm just like, I needed that so bad. So that's how I feel about getting coffee. It's like it's a moment for me to get out of my zone and experience something else for the day. Otherwise, you're just in the same place all the time, and it sucks. Do you ever feel like that? I mean, no, because, I mean, <laughs> I'm not on the surf. Like, your bike break is, like, my surf break. Yeah. The big reason I don't surf more is because I just fucking hate putting on a goddamn wetsuit. Dude, that's why you just don't wear a wetsuit. I know, I wish I could. It's I, so convenient. I literally can't do that. You get a nice little bronze layer going on that uh, white skin, too. I get so fucking miserable. Yeah. 
it's warming up, dude. It feels like summer out there. The water? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure the water now is starting it's to warm like up. 61 degrees. Yeah. It's plenty warm. And, I mean, with beer temp, it's like, what, 75 yesterday? It was gorgeous. Do you ever go down and watch the sunsets? Sometimes, dude. I don't have time. I'm still in the gym. The gym consumes my life. Yeah. You need to work on delegating more. Yeah, but the thing is this, dude. Like, I'm not actually really doing anything in the gym. I just kind of, like, have to be there. Right. Yeah. And a lot of times, too, like, if I decide I'm just not going to be there all fucking day, mm -hmm. which I'll do sometimes, I'll be like, all right, I'm not going to be there all day. Fuck it. I got to at least, like, go in in the afternoon and hang out with everybody for a little bit. Sure. Express account better or is the fast track account better? Which one do you have? What are you talking about? For toll roads? Oh. I don't know. I've never used it. You just pay the tolls? No, I just don't use the toll roads. It's only like a... Dude, you get here like 10 minutes faster. It's nothing. Not on, not on 405 just on like a time like this. Oh, because it's traffic? It'd be an atrocity. The best part of like my eating stuff, dude, for my Instagram is everybody loves my plates. So like when this is all gone, they're nice plates. I'll just have like the sickest plates. A lot of people might look at this plate and think that there's a shit ton of carbohydrates here. An entire thing of raspberries is like 20 grams of carbs. It's really not that much at all. And then with apples, like a whole apple is only like another 25, 30 grams of carbs. So there's only like 50 grams of carbs here. And if I had like a small bowl of oatmeal, that's 50 grams of carbs. So it's hard to, it's hard to say that. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to argue that. Uh, if you wanted to lose weight or get lean, that eating fruit would be the way to go because it's way less carbohydrates than something like grains, especially like cereal. Like I, if you have cereal for any reason, a serving of cereal is so much smaller than you think it is. It's like exponentially smaller. So like a real bowl that you really want to eat is probably like three servings plus the milk and then it just gets out of hand. Those are great plates. That one's fucking all time. All right, so what do we got? Coffee? Yeah, I'm gonna get coffee. All right, coffee into the workout. What do you want? Americano. Americano? And then one of these uh, donuts here. <laughs> he always gets them. <laughs> Which one are you feeling? I just dropped off some samples of gluten free lemon and blueberry donuts. Let's go for it, man. <laughs> <laughs> This is me fucking up right now. You're about to work on it, yeah? Jesus Christ, this is good. It's good? Yeah. Cool. She, she makes our gluten free uh, coffee cakes as well. So. You make them? No, she, no, no. Oh. That girl that just oh, you went like that, and I was like, oh. Be nice. <laughs> oh, look at that. Whoa. That was amazing. <laughs> you know what's cool about YouTube? YouTube? And when I say YouTube twice, I mean you guys. As soon as you walk around with a camera, cool shit happens all the time. <laughs> Want a free donut? <laughs> yes. Dude. Where is it from? It's made out of almond and coconut flour, gluten-free. The place across the street? Dude, it's yeah. unbelievable. Is 
it even a donut? It looks like a muffin. It's made out of like coconut flour. That's pretty fucking delicious. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. We're gonna go to Whole Foods. It's my favorite place to eat after I work out. Not only because they have better choices than most places around here, but um, just unreal. Like, look at the trees over there. <laughs> so, one big reason why I don't like to eat out very often is because when you eat out, a lot of times they're cooking with like vegetable oils, canola oil, stuff like that. And we'll see some stuff in here where they, you know, you can still easily get persuaded into eating some vegetable oil or something on accident because you think it's healthy and it's really not. So I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna show you around the store. Our goal right now is to get some carbohydrates and to get some protein. So I'm gonna find my favorite carbohydrate source and I'm gonna get my favorite protein. So I'm gonna go down this way. <sighs> Overnight oats. You're just getting one? Obsessed. <clears throat> I, didn't, um, I didn't work out for too long today. Uh, mainly, it was like an hour, but not a super intense workout. So because of that, I'm gonna eat like 40 to 50 grams of carbs. If I worked out really hard, I would have 100. So what we have here is 39. And we'll get a little bit more from the salad bar. So working with 39 grams. It only has seven grams of protein, so we're gonna up that and get some stuff from the salad bar. So, the big thing that I'm looking for when you come to these salad bars is, I mean, first and foremost, that you look at the meat and you're like, okay, cool, meat, and then, okay, cool, you know, vegetables or whatever. But check this out. This is really cool because they have a paleo ground beef. It just has olive oil. It doesn't have anything bad in it but you come over to here and you have these green beans that look really healthy and in general, it's regular green beans, but then they add canola oil to their olive oil. So whenever you have canola oil, it's uh, not a favorable fat for your body, not good. And then it pretty much just runs down the line like that. We got canola oil again for the cauliflower. Pretty much everything here is gonna be covered in canola oil. And every once in a while, they have these paleo ones that don't have that. So I usually look for stuff like that. But because this is ground beef, it's gonna have a lot of fat in it. So I can't have that right now for my post-workout. So I gotta stay lean. So carbohydrates and just regular protein. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some chicken, unfortunately, it's not gonna be nearly as good as that, but I still might get some of that for later. Throw a little variety in there. Everybody loves kale. Not. Actually, mushrooms are always good. Get a little zinc in there. A couple sprouts in there never helped out. Go a couple of these tomatoes. These are bomb. But check this out, guys. Look at this. Even stuff like this you think is good and they put dumb shit in there. Sunflower oil, soybeans, 
just a bunch of, if you don't look, sunflower oil again, and then wheat. So, I mean, if you don't look, you can really think you're eating healthy and you're not. <clears throat> I'm obsessed with jalapenos. A little spice in your life? Of course. Come on. These things are always really fun. Olives. Throw a little artichoke in there. Look at this salad right now. Killing it. <clears throat> All right, we gotta get some protein. It's just, it's very upsetting. Look at this, are you ready for this? I'm still gonna eat it because I have no choice right now, but fuck. Turkey breast. Uh -huh. Why do we need caramel to be added with cane sugar and water to my turkey breast? I'm That's literally crazy. fucking baffled. And the chicken? Chicken's just chilling, he's not doing anything, he's not hurting nobody. Fucking canola oil, look at this, get in on this. Are you kidding me? This poor chicken. Wow. If I wasn't with you guys right now in Whole Foods together and we weren't here right now doing, trying to do this and I didn't have my camera guy, I would leave right now and go somewhere else. I swear to God, that's very upsetting. I'm gonna add a little bit of tuna in here. The tuna is the only thing that doesn't have any fucking racist oils. Yeah. That looks good. We need a little bit more carbs. So I'll sprinkle some blueberries on there. And then just because they put that on my food, I'm eating this. And I'm not paying for it. Actually, I'm eating two. Fuck you, Whole Foods. <laughs> I want you to air that. I'll air it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. You want anything? All right, so we've got all my greens, got the protein, got the carbs. I'll eat that. And then basically I'll start eating fat again in like an hour and a half. Everybody always asks, like, when can I start eating fat again? There's really no specific time limit on it, but like an hour and a half later, is usually pretty good after you work out. I eat here quite a bit, but it's mainly because I like to get out of the gym and out of my space. Like I talked about this earlier, like I don't mind going home and cooking, but it's just such a monotonous routine that like to get out, be somewhere like this is just awesome. You broke the jump ropes. I'm not gonna listen to shit right now, dude. You need to put that thing back up yourself and fix it. Obsessed with this. Here's everything that's in there. All right, guys, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go up and down every aisle in Whole Foods right now with you guys and tell you some things that you can look for that are good options when you're making meals. Um, some things on the labels you should be looking for that are potentially not in your best interest. And just some cool things that I really like in the store that are gonna be great for you guys. So right now, let's check out, for those of you who like to make like a breakfast sandwich maybe, there are some wraps that you can use that don't have traditional flour in it and maybe have like coconut or almond flour. So let's see if we can find something like that. Maybe you can make like a burrito or something like that. So let's see what we got. This is gonna be all of your regular wheat stuff. So even though it says vegan, non-GMO, it like really tries to pull you in and you get really excited about it. And then you go on the back and it's still just wheat, malted barley and all that. It's gonna fuck your stomach up. You're gonna feel really gross. <clears throat> so all that, pretty much all this is fucked. Oh wow, this is awesome actually. Cool. So all we have in this is coconut, curry powder, and the psyllium husk and that's it. Three ingredients. I bet this tastes bomb. It's just, uh, it's a little bit more expensive. It's eight bucks versus four. 
and you're only getting five wraps. So it is a little more expensive for sure, but I would buy this all day long. I actually might come back and get that. They have some different flavors here. This one only has two ingredients. That's pretty awesome. A lot of fiber. This is great. It even says up here too, wheat free, raw, vegan, all that stuff. This is cool. <clears throat> all right, so there's a good brand for you for that. Wheat in big letters, gluten slash kill yourself. All right, there you go. Those are good. This is another good brand. It's made out of cauliflower. It's pretty cool. So instead of regular flour, you have, it's made out of cauliflower. So check out the ingredients on that, it's pretty cool. Cauliflowers, egg, and Parmesan cheese. This is rad. And because it's cauliflower, it's super low in carbohydrates. So you can still earn your carbohydrates, like I like to say, earn your carbs always. Don't eat any carbohydrates unless you're gonna work out or you're post-workout. So, great options right there for making sandwiches, burritos, anything like that. So you can still have that bread feel without actually eating wheat and eating bread and causing gluten intolerance and all those type of things. For cheese, that's the next option we have here. If you're gonna do cheese, you wanna get raw cheese. So R-A-W, um, see if we can find any. <clears throat> Typically raw cheese is gonna be a little harder to find. I can tell you right now, this is not raw, but it's the best cheese I've ever had in my whole life. The Hooks Aged Cheddar. Notice though, it's 10 years old cheddar. This little tiny piece, 736. A brick of it will cost you 50 bucks. Ryan, have you ever bought this before? Absolutely, I have. <clears throat> but we're looking for raw cheese right now. <laughs> Let's see what we can find. So when I say raw, like, you know, it says pasteurized, and it's fine, you know, but it's better to have raw. And basically raw holds all of the original probiotics in there. It digests better. It doesn't convert to lactose. So if you're lactose intolerant, you can still eat raw cheese. Um, and you're getting a lot more hormones and stuff out of the cow. Like a lot more value for you for growing muscles and stuff like that. So if we can't find any, we can't. But if you can, always the way to go. Should we talk about alcohol? I know you guys want to talk about alcohol. All right, Good. let's do it. Let's do it. <clears throat> okay, I'm not a huge alcohol guy because I get paid to be basically naked. So, <clears throat> oh. When it comes to alcohol, you absolutely definitely want to get a good red wine. And usually red wines are a little bit better than white wines as far as resveratrol and some different things that are in the wine that are good for you and your heart and stuff like that. Um, so just pick a good, a good glass. There's a lot of studies out there right now sure. that show that people who drink a glass of wine a night live substantially longer lives than people who don't. So like if you drink a glass of wine every night and then your roommate doesn't, after a certain period of time, the person drinking wine will live longer. This is an absolute truth. They did a huge study on this. They also did another group that drank wine like a couple nights a week versus every night, and the every night group lived longer. Very, very strange, so. Um, sure, it's good to know. Another thing that they're doing right now is this fit wine. So, they're making it a little bit like more like keto friendly. So a little bit less carbohydrates and stuff like that. Some things you can look for while you're here. Um, and then the other option would be to go just hard and fast. So tequila, done. Get it in, get it out. Uh, get, your, get your buzz on really, really fast. Here's the best drink you can get when you're out. It's called a NorCal margarita. Even though we're living in SoCal, you have to ask for a NorCal margarita. It's tequila, soda water, and lime. Get you really drunk really fast. Very little calories. Wake up dehydrated and just shredded. <clears throat> I may or may not have done that a couple times. 
All right. This section is very interesting. So this is the alternative section. So you have things like, instead of mayonnaise, it's veginase. But people think they're really healthy when they eat this stuff. So it's easy to get sucked in. It says veginase, then it says better than mayo. Let's see why. First ingredient, canola oil, brown rice syrup, apple cider vinegar, soy protein. I mean, this is completely and utterly fucked. I don't care if you own this company and you're watching this video right now, you are literally polluting the earth and I don't like you. So all of this, fucked. Pretty much all of it. Let's talk about it. Let's, let's see a dressing. They get you really excited. They show you a nice little healthy avocado on there. First ingredient, high oleic sunflower oil. Fucked. So, it's just a travesty. Um, even a bunch of these sweeteners that you guys love, like almond milks and, and all that, you have to be careful. Because you might get something like this, and it still has a ton of sugar in it. Second ingredient, actually, is cane sugar. So that's gonna give you more of an insulin spike than regular milk which is less in your benefit. When it comes to the dairy section, you 100% of the time always want full fat yogurt. Unless it's post-workout, then you wanna have the zero grams of fat and then just get the carbs and the protein in there. But all of the vitamins and minerals that are in dairy are in the fat. So to get a fat-free dairy beverage is actually kind of like an oxymoron. It doesn't really make any sense. So if you're not gonna have full fat yogurt, uh, if you're not gonna have any full fat dairy, I don't suggest you have any. Because there's better ways to get those macros in. Like instead of eating like a 0% fat yogurt, you could have like a banana. You know what I mean? There's so many better options. And you're not gonna feel as full and stuff. Like dairy typically makes people feel really swollen and full. <clears throat> I want to talk about those eggs. Remember this morning we talked about eggs? I want to show you some things I'm talking about. Okay, so you have these organic eggs, you have organic free range, um, all of these really expensive eggs that are going on. You have soy free. So if it doesn't say soy free, like these right here, organic free range, still five dollars a dozen it's it's soy grains basically they're still eating really bad stuff so then you get to the soy free it's obviously more expensive now it's seven dollars for a set but the best eggs here really are the pasture raised ones and we talked about that earlier they're still cheaper uh, better quality egg and they're eating worms if it's pasture raised that means that they have to eat worms so they're not eating any of that any of that product So that's the way to go on here. If you have the option, not a lot of people have this, this is really expensive. Check this out. Those are duck eggs. So you only get six for six dollars. So they're a dollar an egg. A little bit more expensive. They taste amazing and they're a lot bigger egg. And because they're duck eggs and they're more rare, and this is not filled with duck eggs, it's always a better quality egg. Whenever you can get something that's in very small quantities, it's better quality. It's like a mom and pop shop versus a giant facility. So yeah, there's that. And let's go to the protein bar section because that's a big one. And I think protein bar is probably the last stop. Oh, maybe we talk, we talk about drinks. Some of you guys are always looking for something besides water to drink. 
and that's okay. You just got to be careful because some of these sparkling waters have a ton of sugar in them. So like even something like this, like Pellegrino, which I'm drinking right now outside, the non-flavored one, these ones have 16 grams of sugar just in these little guys. So you think sparkling water, you think of nothing in it. You might not even look at the label. You might just grab it. Before you know it, you're having 20 grams of sugar. You have one of those, feel really good about it because it's sugar and it feels good. Then all of a sudden you have two, three, and you're in trouble. <clears throat> These guys are your best bet for sure. So Zevia has, um, Stevia is the sweetener. And Stevia has been shown to not increase your insulin. insulin. It doesn't create any insulin spikes in your body. So you're not getting the same thing from regular sugar. And it's a, I mean, it's a, good, it's a good product. It tastes really good. I still don't really like sweeteners at all. I'd rather not have any sweeteners because then it just makes me want more. And I feel like down the road, sweeteners always come across as like, if you had this sweetener in this year, like, you know, it's actually not good for you. Like aspartame, everybody tried to make sound cool. And all of a sudden, a couple years later, it was really bad for you. Everybody said sucralose was fine. And everyone's talking about that causing cancer. So right now everyone says that stevia is fine. I just feel like eventually they're going to be like, you know what? We fucked up. So best option right now. However, I don't believe in it in the long term. Good information. It's great. I'm crushing. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, this is your absolute go-to. This is just regular sparkling water with natural flavors in it. There's nothing in it. No sweeteners, nothing, no stevia, nothing. Number one, that's my favorite. Second favorite. These guys, Perrier, Mountain Valley, Pellegrino. Actually, Pellegrino is probably my favorite. Flavored wise, though, those are my fave. That's it for drinks. Okay, this is the nut butter section um, and protein bar section and baking section. And this is also the aisle that I call aisle seven, which is where I always think I'm gonna find my future wife. So if you're looking at this video right now and you live in Newport and you ever wanna to come to aisle seven and check me out, it's actually not, it's like aisle one, two, it's like aisle two. But if you go from the other side, it could be seven, Sure. you know? All right, check it out. So when you're baking, you can make some bomb pancakes, crazy good pancakes off of almond flour and coconut flour mix way better than having a wheat flour or any of these other guys like all this stuff it's going to be way better on your digestive system and give you way better uh, macros it's just it even tastes better it tastes heartier a huge fan of mixing together coconut and almond flour just make sure that when you get it it literally just says almonds on it so when you see the ingredients on this one just blanched almonds you know I feel so healthy just grabbing it. The, the donuts this morning were coconut flour. They were, actually, yes. Delicious. I feel good about that. <laughs> All right. Oh, cooking oils, guys. Cooking oils. When you're looking for cooking oils, top bets, you're going to get the raw, unheat-treated coconut oil. I love these. You saw these this morning, the tallows. These are coming from animals. So you have uh, the, the bison one. We have the beef tallow. Those are really great. And I'm also a huge fan of ghee. Ghee is great stuff. What you don't want is any of this stuff. Safflower, grapeseed. This is a complete travesty. It's ruining the planet. Oh, uh, the canola. I hate it. So bad. Stay away from the sprays too. It literally is just, it's not good. There's several reasons why I'm just gonna leave it out, but just stay away from sprays. And yeah, your highest cook, your highest cooking oil, if you wanna cook something on high, because remember I talked about medium and all that and low, if you wanna cook something on high heat, it has to be avocado oil. So this is the only oil that you can put on a high heat and it's still a legit oil. So your best is gonna be tallows, ghee, avocado oil, coconut oil, you can get olive oil, but it has to be raw. Now, this is the most confusing part 
of coming to a grocery store or a supplement place where they have all the bars, right? So we look at all these bars and there's a lot of options. Let's talk about the options that people go to first. They hear the word RX bar and they're like, oh, that one's, that's the healthiest one. There's only like four ingredients in it. Well, let's see what we got. <clears throat> we got all these flavors. Those are the ingredients, great. But here's the problem. We got 23 grams of carbs, 13 grams of sugar, nine grams of fat. It's a good bar, but with nine grams of fat, there's not really a great time to eat this bar. Like ideally post-workout, you would want those carbs and the protein, but you don't want the fat. And you don't really want to eat fat and sugars together. So there's really no great time to eat this. It's healthy in terms of what it is, but there's, there's not a great time to eat it. Even in the morning, it really wouldn't be great. But, so that's gotta go. My go-to bars, like out of all this stuff, is gonna be the Bulletproof bars. I like the Bulletproof bars mainly because you've got a high fat content, 14 grams, and you've got a high protein content. You've only got two grams of sugar. You do have some carbs, but overall, it's more of a keto style bar, so I really like this bar. And I also like the Primal Kitchen bars. I also know the guy who owns this company pretty well, and he's really cool and really on his game. So, this bar's about the same got one gram less fat, same amount of carbs, all that. Pretty solid. So Bulletproof and Primal Kitchen, my favorite bars for sure. But now we have bars that grab our attention, right? Think Thin. People like the Think Thin bar because it grabs their attention. And it says zero grams of sugar, low GI, gluten free. It gives you all the things that you want to hear, right? So you get really excited about it. And when you look at the bar, you go to the ingredients and the protein is, the first one is soy protein. For guys, not the way to go. And then there's more soy in it, glycerin, sunflower oil. Fuck. All of these are fucked. Now you see these little cake things. Now you're starting to feel like, oh, I really want something like that. That sounds so bomb. It only has one gram of sugar. I'm good. All right, well, let's check it out. Macros are actually pretty good, but let's see what it's actually made out of. Soy protein, soy lecithin, all these syrups that literally make an entire paragraph on the back. Fucked. Not gonna be good. Let's go to Vega, all plant-based. This is fun, right? Everybody loves plant-based things. I'm getting excited to talk to you guys about this right now because I don't even know what's on the back, but I just know that I'm gonna win. So, 20 grams of protein, tart cherry, three and a half grams of BCAs. This is gonna be great. Plant-based. Wow, 11 grams of fat, 30 grams of carbs, 14 grams of sugar, 20 grams of protein. When the fuck do I eat something like this? 11 grams of fat and all this sugar and carbs, like it's, it's there's not a, a great time to eat this unless you're hiking, really. You know what I mean? Like it's not post-workout, it's not pre-workout. It's, uh, it's like, you know, you're out hiking or something. It's a great bar for something like that. And even still. So they have brown rice and pea protein together Little thing that you guys need to know, if you don't have brown rice and pea protein together as a plant-based protein, it's not a complete amino acid complex and your body doesn't digest it. So if it's only brown rice or it's only pea protein, your body won't digest it, it has to be both. So they're killing it on that. 
And then all these syrups, all this vegetable glycerin, blah, 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 making this whole paragraph. Fucked. So. <laughs> I'm probably sure he doesn't like me right now. Just going over protein bars right now. Sorry. <laughs> um, another one that's real big is the Lara. Another one that's real simple. Only three ingredients. But again, we've got the high carb, high fat, and low protein combo, which makes it just, it's just, it's just a hard time to eat it. Like timing these things is really, really hard. I wanna see what else is like kind of triggering the people. What do you think? I mean, kind is popular. The Z bars are delicious. But those are like a candy bar. Yeah, anything cliff related is usually always. I'm gonna hit a cliff bar. You might as well, they're popular. Yeah. All right, ready? Yeah. Cliff bars are super popular. That's another bar I like to classify under a hiking bar. So, the reason this is a hiking bar to me is because, actually, you know what? This would work out for post-workout. It's low enough in fat. It's only five grams of fat. You have 45 grams of carbs and then all these other things going on. But here's my, here's my issue with it. All these big brands, the bigger the brand, the cheaper the product becomes. So Cliff Bar is a massive company, it's huge. They're selling tons of bars. So because of that, they go from whey protein to the first ingredient, soy protein isolate. It's actually the second ingredient, but yeah, we can't have soy, we can't do it. If you're trying to make gains, trying to look good, soy's not gonna do it. And every single one that I pull down, they'll all be the same. Yeah, same thing every time. See what the kids are doing these days. Do it for the kids, Cliff Bar. Do it for them. Actually, the kid bar is way better than the men's really? bar, yeah. That's actually interesting. However, there's still like some other oils and stuff in there that's, that I don't super agree with, but Actually, you know what, Cliff Bar and everybody else out there? The kids bar is actually the healthiest one. So, if you're a parents, killing it for your kids. <clears throat> That's actually gonna be really cool to, to, to highlight. Kind bars, everybody likes the kind bars. I haven't looked at these, let me see. Yeah, you can't have 16 grams of fat and 16 grams of carbs and only four grams of protein. This is a hiking bar. So everything for me is pre-workout, post-workout, or hiking bar. I call it a hiking bar because you're just burning a shit ton of calories and you just need calories. That's when these come in. It doesn't mean you can't eat it. It's just not the best quality. Yeah, guys. So, I mean, that's a whole bunch of bars. You know what? Actually, a lot of you guys out there are really big on is these Nature Valley bars. People are huge on these. This is gonna be bad. Whole grain, which is gluten. They should just say gluten. Um, sugar, canola oil, brown rice syrup, soy lecithin, all that. These are gnarly. You don't want this. Super huge company, super, super processed. The bigger they get, the, the worse the quality gets. It's just awful. Let me see these. I think this, this brand is actually doing pretty well. They have sunflower oil in there, but ingredients are pretty, pretty good on the made good stuff. Ready? Yeah. All right, so the biggest thing with your fruits, I mean, vegetables are always usually pretty good, but with your fruits, you wanna look into the glycemic index of a fruit. So I don't wanna get into that right now, but you guys can go online and just type in glycemic index. And the higher the number, the closer you want that to be to post-workout. The lower the number, the more you can have that on other times of the day. Like the lowest 
glycemic index of any fruit that I know of personally is like is an apricot. So you can pretty much have an apricot anytime. And then the highest is gonna be stuff like bananas, apples, stuff like that, an orange. Those have really, really high glycemic indexes. That's why oranges are usually typically paired up with like people who have diabetes. Like it, they give them orange juice at the hospital, stuff like that. Those are really high glycemic. That's post-workout stuff. And then, um, and then yeah, so you guys can just cruise around next time you're in the grocery store. Anything low glycemic is gonna be berries and those really smaller, less sweet fruits. And then anything that's super sweet, something that really attracts your uh, taste buds is gonna be a little bit higher glycemic index. And that's gonna be more of a post-workout thing. Doesn't mean you can't have it, it's just more of a post-workout. Crushed. Crushed. <laughs> Murdering this place. I just say, all right, we just wrapped up. All right, guys, we just wrapped up. Hopefully you guys feel a little bit better on how to shop through Whole Foods. Hopefully you feel a little bit better about what I'm doing on the daily. So you guys understand like what, what I'm looking for every time I go to the store. Help you guys understand what you guys should be looking for when you go to the store. And hopefully you can just navigate that place a little bit better. Whole Foods over and out.